Subject, Captain Wong. Species, human. Description, Mammalian humanoid, no tail. Six foot two, 1.87 meter, average height. 185 pounds, 84 kilograms. Average weight, 170 year life expectancy. Ship, USSS Valor. Location, Sol. It had been a close call. After we had dispatched the enemy combatants, we received a hail we assumed was survivors offering surrender. Instead, we got a bunch of garbled static and lost control of most of our systems. Thankfully, we had Tim. The virus is officially scrubbed clean and there are no further signs of infection, sir. I took the liberty of checking Lieutenant Bavanin's suit to make certain he wasn't infected as well. Tim informed me over the comm. Thank you, Tim. Uh, that'll be all, I replied. Well, not quite, sir. Admiral Hecate and Captain Reynolds want to debrief of the aliens ASAP. I nearly rolled my eyes. Can't get a moment of peace these days. Potential AI is a pretty big red flag when it comes to combatants, so their rush is understandable. We all had a pretty close brush with death, and the poor aliens must be swimming in fear chemicals right now, though. Still, better to get it over with and let them relax than to drag it out any longer. We also had to get med data for them, and that was likely to be unpleasant. Especially with Doc Zickler. Did they provide a list of must-asks? I asked. Of course, it's on your tablet. Shall I send for Ship Alina? Yes. Clear a conference room and set up an audio call with Admiral Hecate and Captain Reynolds. Since they're so damn curious, they can take part themselves, I said, with no lack of venom in my words. All right, Tim said, with an enthusiasm he knew was annoying. I grabbed my tablet and headed to the conference room. I sat in my favourite chair and began looking over the battle data. The Omni Union was pathetic. Their shields were similar to what we used for our infantry, and their missiles were highly spaceworthy. Not much more advanced than their foes. If it weren't for the synchronous movements and confirmation from the reptile captain, I would doubt they were AI at all. A real AI was a much, much more dangerous foe. There was a knock at the door, and Lieutenant Bavanin entered, with Ship Hedulina in tow. Captain Wong, sir, this is Ship Hedulina of the RSV Loelana. Ship Hedulina, this is Captain Wong of the USSS Valor. Please have a seat, Bavanin said as he gestured to one of the many chairs in the room. Thank you for your assistance, Captain Wan, Ulina said as they sat down. I put on my best captain face and said, I only wish we could have done more, shiphead. My apologies for conducting this debrief so soon after what must have been a traumatic incident, but we have certain policies in place that demand haste when it comes to hostile AI. After fighting the OU for so many years, I completely understand. I smiled and continued. Good. This is a formal debrief under United Systems military law. You currently have the rights afforded to you as a first contact refugee. You may request accommodations if you find the debrief conditions unsuitable to your needs. You may request medical attention as well as food and water. You may refuse to answer any question that pertains to information that your governing entity considers classified. Any violent actions on your part will result in a revocation of these rights and will be met with extreme force. Olina swallowed nervously, but I continued. Refusal to participate in this debrief will result in your classification changing to potential combatant, and you will be detained and confined to quarters, as will any uninjured members of your crew. I am required to inform you that this debrief has been recorded, as well as monitored live by Admiral Hecate and Captain Reynolds. They will not be speaking. I added a bit of emphasis on my last sentence, to show my contempt for their micromanagement. The poor reptile looked like his head was swimming. Do you understand these disclosures, as they have been read to you? I finished. Yes, Alina says slowly. Yes, I think I do. Excellent. First question. What is your rank, governing entity, species and sex, please? The shiphead blinked and said, I am a shiphead, which is a commander of a ship in the Republic fleet. The Republic is my governing entity, and I'm a Mel Urakari. Thank you, I said. Now for the tough questions. What were you doing before you were attacked? Ulina seemed unsure whether he should answer. We were sent to scout out war fluctuations that seemed unnatural, and were ambushed by Omni Union immediately upon our arrival. Our shields hadn't had a chance to re-engage, so we performed a blind warp jump to escape. Then we wound up here. Thank you, I said. That answered the next question as well. Moving on, who are the Omni Union, and what is your relation to them? 
The On the Union are a conglomeration of artificial intelligences that are seeking expansion. We aren't sure where they originate from, but they began assaulting Republic forces 30 years ago. We have been in open war with them ever since. A pop-up appeared on my tablet from Admiral Hackett, demanding a follow-up question. One which I was going to ask anyway. How many AI do you estimate there are? I asked. We don't know for certain, Ulina looked at the floor. But our experts believe there are at least 100 trillion. Despite myself, I was stunned into silence for a few moments. I'm sorry, I may have misheard. Did you say 100 trillion? I clarified. Yes. Impossible. Just flat out impossible. Their experts are wrong. There's no way that they could have survived being assaulted by 100 trillion AI. That kind of computing power would lead to an unstoppable singularity, judging by how easily their forces were dispatched and how close the OU's tech was to the Republic's. These supposed AI were imitative rather than inventive. What the hell is going on here? A message pinged in from Captain Reynolds. Probably not AI, might be a Gestalt VI, asked Tim. It wasn't long before a reply from Admiral Hecate came in. Yes. I thought for a moment how to breach this subject and finally said, Alina, I think there's been a miscommunication. Your definition of artificial intelligence and ours seem to differ somewhat. I'd like to introduce you to an AI and ask their opinion on the matter. Alina's eyes widened with a shock that I knew would come. AI is a taboo in a lot of cultures for good reasons. Eventually, though, Alina nodded his consent. Tim? I asked, seemingly to empty air. Yes, sir. That empty air responded. You seem to be a necessary presence in this debrief. Catch yourself up and then introduce yourself to our guest. Understood. Working? Caught up. Hello, shiphead Ulina of the Republic space vessel Lower Lana. Tim said with far too much cheer. I am the artificial intelligence known as Tim. It's short for Timothy, but I prefer to pretend that is an acronym for Totally Impressive Machine. Olina now looked as if he had seen a ghost. He managed to stutter, Hello, T Tim. Pleasure to meet you. Tim, what's your take? I asked. I don't have one yet. I have some questions that need answering first, if you two don't mind. Go ahead, I replied tersely. Shiphead Olina, to your knowledge, have you ever been able to communicate with the OU? Tim asked. Olina thought for a moment and said, Kind of? When they attack a system, they broadcast who they are and state their intentions, but they don't respond to any communications we send. Okay, and how do you know why your experts believe there are around 100 trillion of them? Um, something to do with leftover code found in what debris we were able to obtain from our ships that were taken over. Tim paused for a moment and then said, Yeah, I don't think the OUI AI as we define it. I think they're rogue VI. The only problem with that theory is that we don't know what could be directing the VI, I said. Ulina looked confused before asking, What's VI? How does it differ from an AI? Tim laughed and said, A VI is a virtual intelligence. It imitates rather than innovates. A VI would watch a sapient solve 2 plus 2 with 4, and would be able to answer 2 plus 2 with 4. An AI would be able to determine that if 2 plus 2 equals 4, then, given any two polyhedra of equal volume, it is not always possible to cut- Yeah, we get it. You're smart and stuff. Move on, please, I interjected, before Tim could finish disproving Hilbert's third problem. Right, Tim continued. When we were hacked, it was by virtual intelligences, not artificial intelligences. About 400,000 of them. I stared at Alina for a moment before saying, We only answer the hail of one of the ships. If these experts believe there are 100 trillion of them, based off of 400,000 VIs, then that means they estimate that the OU has... 250 million ships, Tim cut me off. I glared at the speaker that Tim was talking out of. It may seem futile to anyone watching, but Tim knew what I meant, and that was all that mattered. 250 million ships was a staggering number, though. Ulina looked at me and said, Yes, at least. How can you be sure of that? I asked. Our scout ships... We periodically check in on the systems they have expanded into that we know of. 250 million was our latest ship count. How have you not been overrun? How many ships does the Republic have? I can't tell you exactly how many, but I can say that we have a near equivalent number. Alina looked back towards the ground. We're not winning the war though. 
Don't be so downtrodden, Shiphead. It's difficult to win a war against an enemy that can mimic your every maneuver in perfect detail, Tim said in an empathetic voice. Tim's attempt at cheering up Alina didn't appear to have worked. I checked the tablet to see that Admiral Hackett and Captain Reynolds were talking back and forth. 250 million might be a problem. Our numbered 5 to 1 is almost a fair fight. No, Reynolds, that's orbital kamikaze numbers, and they likely already know where Sol is. Then we should bring the fight to them? I don't know. Well, that concludes the debriefing. You look a bit down. Follow me to the bridge. I think I know something that will cheer you up, I said to Alina as I rose from my seat. The ship had followed me to the bridge where he stopped, wide-eyed. I looked around and realised that the tech he was seeing was probably pretty impressive by his standards. He hadn't seen anything yet, though. I gestured for him to approach a view screen highlighting the debris field left by the OU ships. We can't just leave this here, and we also don't want to risk losing resources trying to clean it up, I said, while allowing a grin to reappear. What will you do? Lena asked. I think an A2 warhead will do the trick quite nicely, don't you, Tim? And that's why I like humans, Tim responded. Always finding ingenious uses for weapons of mass destruction. Prepping the red matter will head now. Red matter? What's that? Alina asked. One of the deadlier weapons in our arsenal. We aren't permitted to use it in standard warfare, but I already got clearance to use it to clean up this mess. Just watch. Miss already, Tim said. Fire. We both watched the view screen as the A2 symbol approached the debris field. Once it was within range, it detonated, and all of the debris was sucked into a singular point in space. There were several flashes of nuclear fire that nearly escaped the temporary black hole before being consumed. I guess those must have been the mines that the lieutenant reported. I turned to see Olina's expression. I was satisfied to see his mouth gaping and his eyes wide. Being a captain in the United Systems has its perks. <laughs>